Let me ask you this. Chair Powell coming out earlier this week saying that bringing down inflation requires measures that are not popular, that they will be taking measures that are not popular. Uh, were you surprised that he made this statement or what do you, what do you think he, what do you think was the reasoning no. for it? Well, what are they going to continue to do? Not popular, meaning what? what? What has the Federal Reserve admitted to us here? That they are trying to crush demand. By crushing demand, they're hurting the consumer. So people are not going to be happy dealing with the uh, deteriorating, rapidly deteriorating uh, economic situation here. Small businesses having to shutter here. People, again, are uh, being forced to borrow just to make ends meet. What they're doing here all right, is, is, is eliminating an entire class of people on a worldwide scale. Um, and this has been something that's been going on for quite a long time, but it's accelerating um, as we move forward here. People who are former members of the middle class, just to maintain that illusion that they're still in the middle class, what are they doing? They're borrowing more and more and more. Meanwhile, they're saving nothing. And do they think maybe down the line this is going to, there's going to be a price to pay? No. So central banks here are assuring, um, and it's, it's, you know, it's in our face, that the global economy is going to continue to shrink. Um, and that's going to pressure a lot of people. People are going to be losing their jobs by the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands here. We already know what these major corporations are doing, layoffs. Tens, by the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. You think this is going to stop anytime soon? No, this is what they're talking about. The Fed is in here. You know, look, what are they going to do here? They've been raising rates for many, many months. We haven't seen anything dramatic happen with inflation. It's still rising, okay? Um, so that is an, an environment that people are gonna are, are not happy. Um, so the killing demand, killing the man or the woman here, pressuring them to survive or at least attempt to survive in a, de a deteriorating uh, economic situation, which they're bringing about. Why do central banks want to kill the economy? Very simple. They want to kill the economy so they can become the lender and buyer of last resort. What are central banks doing? They issue debt through one door and then they buy it back through another. This mechanism has been going on and on and on and on and this is how central banks are gaining more power. The moment we have a real leader that's like maybe wants to you know, share the secret with everyone, uh, say, listen, everyone, we have a debt-based economic model. We need to end it. In order to, to take back the system, we have to get... We need a, re a revolution against central banking. Central banking, in my view, is a curse upon the world. How can we possibly allow private institutions to run the financial system and henceforth the economy? Where is that written anywhere? It wasn't what our forefathers envisioned here in the United States. Um, no, we were supposed to have a commodity-backed system or a wealth-based system which would enrich everyone. Okay, but no, we lost that. We all gave it up. Where's the revolt? Where are the people on the streets? They're being distracted. Look at this. Focus on that. Yes, it's just nonsensical. But again, they got the people where they want them by the throat. And that pressure uh, that what, what Powell's talking about, yeah, it's going to get a lot worse. It's not getting better. There is no rainbow out there on the horizon here. The global economy is going to contract faster. People are going to suffer more and unfortunately become more dependent on the system. That's what they need, more people to become dependent on it. And then what are they gonna do? Eventually, this whole thing, it's not sustainable. I, I wanna get a okay. few- uh, This global debt bubble. No, no, yeah. you can finish your thought. I just wanna get a few other points in. Yeah, the global debt bubble is going to continue to be hyperinflated until it bursts, and it's going to burst. And central banks are fueling it by getting in here. How do how does a central bank keep rates wherever they want it? Do they just say, "Oh, we're going to keep rates low"? No, central banks have to get into the market. They have to make it happen. They're not magical. They can't just say something and it just happens. So we have this manipulation of the global debt market by central banks collectively. Uh, who are continuing to inflate because they have no choice. That's the that's the backbone of the system, and uh, are people who have no clue at all uh, of, of how the system works. They got people deaf, dumb, and blind, and maybe holding out some kind of hope that maybe things are going to change for them for the better. There's no shot um, in hell. Any thoughts on central bank buying and gold? Um, we've seen records amount in 2022. There's a mystery buyer of you know, 300 tons of gold, all fingers basically pointing to China. 
any thoughts on why the accumulation, sudden accumulation, super accumulation of gold by uh, CBs? Well, you know, look, anybody who has even the slightest brain cell function, in my view, understands that these things are real wealth. When a central banker tells you that central banks hold gold for tradition, you know, you know that they're lying to your face. And of course, there's no accountability today anymore. But if you look at anyone who has uh, any kind of net worth, they all, every, everybody is holding gold and silver. They, and why? Look, in my view, this is very simple. And I've been telling people this for the longest time. Um, these are units of wealth. They have been so for thousands and thousands of years. And we don't need any central banker to reassure us of that. If we understand that this current debt-based economic model is eventually going to implode on itself, and of course they're going to issue another system like it, it doesn't matter. If you're holding physical gold, physical silver, my favorite asset of all time, physical silver, and I tell, I tell people, why, why does Greg Manorino say that silver is, is, is the most undervalued asset in the world? I just look at a, a, simple, a, a couple of very simple metrics, and I urge people to just do their, a little homework on their own. Look at the Dow, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, gold ratio and then the gold silver ratio you look at these things you will see how undervalued silver is and gold too and platinum and palladium as well i, I own all the metals people everybody knows that i'm an open book so but look that's why they're, they're, people, these are real units these are real things and what's how and why people need to have exposure to not just in my opinion at least uh gold silver they need exposure to commodities because they're real things Right now, the environment is, is pretty straightforward. The stock market, although we are off record high, still remains the place to be for a lot of reasons because central banks are going to continue to support the system in my view. Okay. But until this risk on system, meaning cash moving into equities reverses, and it's going to in a very hardcore way, um, people need to be looking on the, taking the opposite side of that trade and looking at commodities because how this is going to play out is very simple. It's, it's, it's very easy. We have a, a debt market hyper bubble. Suppressed rates have caused distortions across the spectrum of asset classes unlike anything we've ever seen in the history of the freaking world. Okay. Now that's going to correct at one point. At one point, we're going to, going to get a meltdown here and the debt market rates are going to spike in an uncontrolled fashion. And no amount of debt buying by central banks is going to be able to fix the situation because the currency is just going to, the purchasing power of the currency is, is already getting sucked out. It's going to get sucked out very, very rapidly. The rising of rates in an uncontrolled fashion is just going to melt down the global equity markets. Okay, and it's the polar opposite of what we've been seeing. Suppressed rates have inflated uh, stock market bubbles around the world, reinflated a housing bubble, which is cracking, quite obviously. Um, but again, debt market implosion kills global equity markets and cash is just going to move from the debt market and from the equity market into commodities because they're real things. And then you're going to see risk on, turn risk off. Who knows what the value in dollars could actually be because the commodities are priced in dollars when this whole thing really does uh, turn around. And it's going to, in my opinion, it's just a hyper bubble.